Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. Uh, we thanks first Joan for coming uh, to see us in Espoles. He's doing the PhD in the, at the WIP, the university, and he's working currently at the IEO with Javier uh, Jorda. And he was kind enough to come and present his work and see Espoles. So please, Joan. Well, it's not so far, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> thank you. You are my Yorkies. Thank you, Dean, for inviting me. Uh, uh, well, I'm going to talk about uh, meteor tsunamis uh, because it is the topic of my PhD, and I've prepared this presentation in order to be like a first introduction to meteor tsunamis, and at the end, I maybe I'll, I will go uh, faster to explain what uh, a part of what I'm doing and part of what I've done until now in, in my PhD, and well, you will see there is a surprise at the end. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, let's start. Uh, by definition, uh, a meteor tsunami, uh, if you don't know the, the term, uh, is uh, we call meteor tsunamis to sea level oscillations uh, at a high frequency with the order of a few minutes to uh, a few hours. This is the same frequency band uh, at which uh, tsunamis oscillate, but in the case of meteor tsunamis, uh, their origin is at some uh, energy, uh, uh, some atmospheric uh, source. Uh, you here have a map of the meteor tsunamis that have been reported uh, worldwide, and you see how uh, in all the uh, world ocean we have observed meteor tsunamis, and there are some regions that are considered as meteor tsunami hotspots, which uh, are, for example, the Japanese uh, coast, uh, the the Balearic Island and the Adriatic Sea. And uh, the most famous uh, harbor for meteor tsunamis, probably in the world, is the Ciutadella uh, Harbor. Uh, and you can see uh, here images from the meteor tsunami that occurred in, uh, in, two, in 2006, uh, which has uh, oscillations of several metals that destroyed uh, uh, a lot of uh, boats that were in the in the harbor. Well, uh, what? Uh, uh, how do we see a meteor tsunami? Well, if you are in the harbor, uh, you can and the meteor tsunami is large enough, you can see it uh, by, by your eye because it has uh, important consequences in in the in the sea level. But uh, normally, we study the the meteor tsunamis uh, with tight gauge data and. Uh, the meteor tsunamis are very weak oscillations of a few minutes, so we need of a high uh, temporal resolution to measure them. And here you see the, the image of a meteor tsunami that I'm more used to because it's the uh, tight gauge record of, of, uh, of Ciutadella during this event uh, in 2018. And you can see how uh, we, there is a, a small... Uh, uh, we have filtered this signal and this is only the, the, the high resolution signal of the, of the sea level and you see that we have uh, uh, really small uh, oscillations and then at, when the meteor tsunami occurs the oscillation reach uh, more than one meter of amplitude and we measure the meteor tsunami's amplitudes as the difference of uh, height between the, 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 the top and the, and the bottom of the, of the signal. Uh, well. Uh, as I have shown you, we, we can zoom uh, the, the signal of the sea level and we have these, these clear oscillations. And first, uh, we can, we, the center tsunami starts with a, a degrees in the, in, the, in the sea level and the, the, the harbor uh, gets dry. Then uh, it, there is an inflow of, of water. Uh, which very strong currents. Uh, it is important to take into account that uh, uh, what causes uh, damage of meteor tsunamis is not just the the, the floating, is also the strong currents. Because imagine that you that you have Ciutadella Harbor and it increases the the height uh, for two meters. For example, you have to take into account that all the water that occupies these two meters in all the harbor have to go. Uh, out of the harbor in five minutes, which is the half of the period of oscillation of the harbor. Then we have this uh, inflow of, of water, uh, then the, the sea level rise, then uh, uh, again the, 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 the water goes out and it, 
it, this level goes down again and we have this process, uh, it does not oscillation, so it happens several times, but we normally have a, a, a peak, a, an oscillation that is larger than, than the others. Well, uh, this is what, what you see, it is very easy to understand, but I, was, uh, I wanted to make it clear for people who haven't, who have never heard about metasonalis. Uh, and uh, it is interesting that uh, these oscillations are really very, very useful, very usual in situ data. Not the the ones in the photos, but uh, around one meter, they happen every summer in in that harbor. And uh, people from that is for people from situ data, they are used to this this phenomena and they know it. But uh, until the past the 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 twentieth century, we didn't know uh, what caused these these metasunamis uh, until uh, some some people started started to study them and uh, here I have shown you the face of Eduard Fonseca who was the first one not in the world but in the in the Catalan countries in Barcelona to 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 say that uh, these oscillations were caused by um, an uh, an oscillation in the atmospheric. Prefer. And then a lot of scientists from most of them from from here, from the from Mallorca, from Himedea, from the IMET, uh, have studied this phenomena, and we know how they are are generated. Um, well, the 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 first thing that we have to take into account is that uh, meteor tsunamis are very similar to tsunamis. In fact, if if you see them happen, you can you can distinguish them from a, from a seismic tsunami uh, at the moment, but you can, if there isn't any seismic recording of an of a earthquake near, uh, you can, and you look at the atmospheric pressure records, uh, then you can distinguish them. Uh, we have to take into account that uh, earthquakes are very strong sources of energy, and the atmospheric disturbances that are causing metal tsunamis, they are not. Uh, they are oscillations of around uh, a few hectopascals, and for each f hectopascal of change in the air pressure, we expect to have a one centimeter change in the sea level. And we are talking about changes of uh, meters in Siltadeje. So we have to, we, we need of several uh, amplification mechanisms that uh, makes the, the energy transfer between the atmosphere and the ocean uh, continuous and, and very optimal to have uh, important metal tsunamis at the coast. Uh, so this is what is happening. We have an atmospheric perturbation. Uh, in, in general, we, we are talking about atmospheric gravity waves, but there are other um, perturbations that can generate metal tsunamis. This, uh, this uh, perturbation is moving along the, the, the sea. Uh, in, in, in we are talking about the Menorca Channel in, in general because it's, it's what we have here in the Balearic Island, and uh, they move together. And this there is an amplification that I will explain later. But we have these two elements: the atmospheric perturbation moving and the sea uh, and the sea wave. Uh, first, we need to have an atmospheric uh, perturbation to generate a metal tsunami, and we know that these atmospheric perturbations they generate in a certain environmental uh, um, synoptic conditions that are characterized by uh, an, an, uh, an, a strong jet uh, in the upper levels, which points towards the, the northeast, the, the northeast, as you can see here in this, in this map, uh, and a strong jet of wind here uh, pointing towards the north. And then at the lower levels, we, we have an entrance of African air that comes from from the from the Sahara Desert, uh, which is warm and that the, the Mediterranean air that we have here, and this generates a, a stable layer in the lower atmosphere. These are the conditions that were found to to cause the generation of of uh, these uh, atmospheric perturbations. Uh, when we look at the at the mesoscale of this of this. Uh, of these conditions, we, we can find a profile similar to this one. I, I won't extend, as if some one of you have any questions about this, I'll can explain later. But it basically creates a, a stable layer at the at the lower part of the atmosphere that allows the energy to, to travel long distances at these frequencies, and and uh, it, it can it can generate this. It, it enables that these perturbations propagate over the, the sea to generate uh, a wave. 
uh, then when well, when then we focus on on the on the uh, transferring of energy between this uh, atmospheric perturbation and uh, the sea wave. Uh, there is a, a, a natural response, a direct response in a change of atmospheric pressure in the sea uh, that is of one, centi one centimeter per hectopascal. But when when we have these two, these two, um, you would see here in this in this in this drawing. Uh, we have the atmospheric perturbation that is traveling over the 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 uh, Bariac, the Bariac island and uh, it creates a wave and if they travel at the same velocity they travel together and the energy is continually pumped from the atmosphere to the to the uh, to the sea wave and this amplification uh, can can be of a, of a factor between or and then more or less it depends uh, and and this enables the generation of a, a larger sea wave than it would be for for the direct response and finally uh, we just we need another amplification which is the hardware amplification that is produced uh, when uh, a harbor is excited well uh, every harbor have its own oscillations uh, periods like uh, for, we can compare it to, to a, 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 the st a string on a guitar that, depending on the length, uh, it will ring uh, in a tone on another tone. Uh, then uh, every hardware, depending on its length, uh, width, and depth, uh, they have their own uh, frequency of oscillations. Uh, and and here you can see the the spectra of the hardware of Citadella. This is the energy as function of frequency, and you can see how. Uh, the, the hardware of Sutadella have this uh, this main eigen eigen period at 10.7 uh, minutes. Uh, this is for Sutadella, but for the Colomb we have different characteristics, and its uh, eigen period is around 20 20 minutes. So depending on the hardware, uh, this oscillation will happen at the frequency or not frequency. And in the case of Sutadella, uh, we have this one. And uh, when the energy comes from, from, from out of the hardware, having energy at this period, it is amplified uh, because the energy is trapped in, within the hardware and, and, and the oscillation increases by, uh, by another factor of 10 more or less. So uh, uh, these perturbations of one hectopascal uh, increase their, their, their height in a factor of uh, around 100. You know? This explains why we have these metasunamis in, in Ciutadella. And all these conditions are optimal in Ciutadella because uh, we have the long Menorca channel in front of the entrance and uh, the, the Ciutadella harbor have this uh, particular um, shape which is, uh, uh, which, uh, can, which is optimal also for, for harbor amplifications. Uh, well, I've, uh, I've already explained the, what the main, uh, the basis of the, of the uh, metasunami generation mechanisms um, and now uh, I'm going to explain more or less what I'm doing in my PhD project because uh, these characteristics that we know uh, don't enable us to completely understand some things about metasunami and uh, all, all things I have explained are for Ciutadia Harbor and but there are a lot of harbors in, in, in this island that we haven't uh, explored, so this is an interesting point. Uh, we also have a very interesting uh, set of, um, of prediction systems for the tsunami, but their the predictions are, are not perfect, so we also are interested in, in uh, sorry, in making them better. And, and now I also have uh, and another interesting thing that well, I have a lot of data. Uh, <laughs> uh, in the in the in the in the last few years, uh, a lot of tight gauges have been installed in the Bayerik Island. Uh, the, there are some of them for Puerto del Estado and Sosip that have been running now for for several years. And in our in Project Venom, uh, uh, the the WIP and the Yeo together they created this device of low low cost tight gauge and we installed uh, a lot of them in you can see the 
the blue squares, uh, we start uh, around 20 devices uh, around the island to, to, to see how could, the tsunamis could affect some, 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 por some harbors of the right island that have never been studied. Uh, and the, another idea is to try to see how the meteor tsunami wave is propagating along the the, the Baric Island, and uh, we, we we haven't uh, been able to do it, but it's uh, it's it forms part of the plan of my thesis. And for now, I'm focused more on the amorphic part, uh, and in the amorphic side, a lot I also have a lot of new data because there is this uh, amazing amateur meteorological network uh, that have a lot of stations. Uh, uh, I, we have more than 80 stations in the Balearic Island that are providing us data every 10 seconds. So this is uh, an impressive uh, data set and uh, I'm using all this data to characterize the atmospheric perturbation that is uh, generating the meteor tsunamis in, in Cipedeia. So uh, my first, my, the, part, the first part of my of my work has been focused on the on the meteor tsunamis that occurred in the in the season in the season of uh, 2021. Uh, here you have a table with all the meteor tsunamis that occurred that season, and you can see how the maximum amplitudes are of uh, 1.17 meters, which is not a, a huge meteor tsunami, but is something. And here you have. Uh, some examples of the time series that I'm used to work with. Here you have the filtered atmospheric pressure uh, time series, and you can notice uh, here the how how are these perturbations that are generating the the sea level oscillations. And here you have the the wavelet uh, spectrum, which are which provide us with the uh, spectral information as function of the period. And time. They are not just like the traditional uh, spectra that show the the average spectra of, all, of uh, time series. They show the the the, the spectral energy as function of time, also, which is useful for us to to see how meteor tsunamis are. Well, uh, the this um, this meteorological network allows us to see uh, the. Uh, very small spatial changes in the atmospheric perturbation that is causing the, the meteor tsunami. Here you have uh, the, the time series in different uh, stations and notice here that we have uh, this uh, very large and a narrow peak uh, which is the one generating the maximum meteor tsunami in this particular event uh, which, uh, can not, which is very smaller in, in this station here at near near Cala, Cala Mayor. Uh, so the first thing that we notice is that th these, these perturbations are not homogeneous over the island and this uh, is, is th we have to take into account this uh, because, uh, for example, we if we detect an amorphic perturbation in Palma, uh, we know that when it arrives to Ciutadella, it will be different. So, so we can account uh, that this same perturbation will go, will be homogeneous over the Menorca channel, for example. Uh, but another thing that uh, I'm all, uh, I can do with all this data is to estimate the atmospheric perturbation uh, propagation velocity, which is a very important parameter in the meteor tsunami generation because uh, we need that the, the, uh, the perturbation to have the same velocity that the shallow water waves that is generated in the Menorca channel to, to generate the, the amplification that, that, that I have explained before. So, uh, using all these uh, time series in all these stations, I can use this algorithm that basically uh, like kind of triangulates uh, the, the the, the, the velocity of the perturbation, and we estimate the time that the perturbation needs to, to, to arrive from one station to another by using the, the maximum correlation lag, uh, and then we obtain these velocity estimates for a particular moment. Uh, I also can, well, here uh, you have an example. This is a meteor tsunami event. Uh, with this amorphic uh, pressure, per, um, pressure perturbation and this sea level uh, response. And here you have the obtained uh, amorphic perturbation velocity as function of time. The, 
we, we have a lot of stations and the time series have a lot of uh, temporal resolution so I, I can uh, do smaller windows of this of this um, of this atmospheric pressure signal and then do this uh, correlation in two hour windows and, and moving this window half an hour and I can obtain a time series of these velocity estimates and I also will do these estimates in localized places because as I have that, that much stations uh, I can do it by choosing uh, one station and then just use the, the three or five that are closer uh, to avoid errors due to the, the change of the atmospheric pressure. So, but I'm obtaining a lot of estimates, one per each station and one for, for each window of time. So, uh, at the end, I, I, I do the medium of all this estimation to have an overall image of how the amorphic pressure perturbation is moving. And here you can see this event is, is very long, it took more than two days. Uh, and you can see here at the beginning of the event, I have uh, this uh, atmospheric pressure perturbation moving around to met, uh, 30 meters per second, which fits very well with the previous numerical study, for example, when they <laughs> tried how changing this perturbation velocity affected the, the amplification. And this, so this is the result. The, the, the direction propagation is also uh, quite, uh, quite good. It's, uh, two, it's two, two, 210. Uh, degrees, which is more or less pointing to the entrance of the city of Harbor, so another good result. Uh, but uh, during the event, it is changing a lot, which is also interesting because normally when you look at older uh, studies about meteor tsunamis, they are usually considering that uh, they are computing the the. The, these velocities just for one windows of 12 hours or, or, or for a full day or when I, where they are using numerical modding models and testing uh, the changes in the velocity how this affects they are uh, considering constant velocities so it is interesting that we have found that the, the velocities are not constant and uh, just to see an example here um, we have in uh, this is the atmospheric perturbation and first this is this this uh, important uh, pressure fall of 3 etopascal which uh, founds a response of 90 centimeters oscillation in the harbor here we see how uh, this atmospheric perturbation is traveling around uh, 30 meters per second and with uh, a duration that we consider good to the meter tsunami generation and later uh, we have this even larger uh, a pressure perturbation of 4 etopascal, which is only generating uh, 70 centimeters uh, perturb uh, sea level oscillation. Uh, and looking at the velocity, we found that in this case the velocity is of 40 meters per second, which isn't as optimal as the one of 30 meters per second because uh, the, the depths on the Meroka channel uh, are, are, are are not enough to, to, to generate shallow waters at, at, this, at this speed. So uh, we have found in this uh, a small example how uh, uh, this rapid change in, in, in the velocity that we are able of, of estimate with this method uh, are, are causing changes in, in how the city of Harbor uh, is oscillating. Well, uh, uh, this was uh, an example uh, in the small scale, but uh, the, 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 the work that I've done, I've estimated the amorphic perturbation velocities for uh, these nine events that occurred that summer at, uh, and I've done it for the whole uh, frequency band between two minutes and two hours uh, and but I've also uh, estimated the amorphic perturbation velocity in shorter uh, frequency bands uh, I've done it for the frequency band around 10 minutes the from the particular band, but, uh, frequency band around um, 20 minutes and for the frequency band uh, with uh, lower frequencies and here you can see the estimates that in most cases they provide very similar results this means that the, the perturbation is propagating over the Balearic Islands as a non-dispersive wave which confirms an old result that, has, that was found uh, uh, in, in articles in the in the 90s, but uh, now we can do it with much more the uh, more 
much more uh, observations, so it is an interesting result. And then here you can see how uh, I've plotted also the, the, the amplitude of the sea level oscillation measured in Citadelia, and you can see how these, the, the, the values that are uh, are are with with short spread of of with short errors. This means that uh, the distribution of estimates is 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 small. Uh, in the in the in the when the error bar is long, it means that uh, in the different estimates in different stations, I've obtained a lot of different values. And we see how in 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 general, um, the the. The, val the values with uh, a smaller spread provide larger sea level oscillations in situ area, which can explain it like saying that uh, when the amorphic perturbation is more is more coherent and the all the is, all the observations provide similar velocity estimates, it will mean that um, the sea level oscill oscillation in situ area will be larger because uh, like the, the the perturbation is. Uh, the structure is like more solid, and this is like our hypothesis, not not completely uh, proved. Uh, well, uh, this is this was like uh, the final uh, result of my first first work, and now uh, I'm doing more and more stuff. And and in the first paper, there are uh, more things talking about the amorphic perturbations. But I wanted to show you something that I'm doing now, which is uh, you, uh, we have a problem with meteor tsunamis that we need a lot of res resolution in our sea level observations, and these observations are not uh, available for a longer time for long time periods. Uh, and I wanted to show to present you this person, which is Joseph Pasquale, which is an, an uh, who is an amateur. Uh, an amateur meteorologist who has been collecting data uh, from with a lot of with uh, that is of high quality for those who who are studying the ocean and you can find uh, sea, sea level temperature uh, time series measured every day uh, since the 70s uh, and one of the things that uh, he did was to build his uh, his own uh, Tate gauge, and, uh, and you can see here, and this have allowed us to generate uh, a, a meteor tsunami time series from the uh, 1990, and we are trying now to do some some research with with the data, and you can see in this map how uh, the first Tate gauge is installed in the Barrica, and where the the ones from Puerto del Estado in 2009, and this. Uh, this uh, time series is 20 years longer than those, so it's a very useful data. And finally, um, one uh, one other thing that I did last year, because uh, I, now it has passed more than a year from the eruption of the of the of the Tonga volcano, and I don't know if if you know, but this. Well, this here you have images of the explosion, which was uh, I don't I, I, this is not my my topic, but the strength is about one one hundred one hundred fifty megatons, which is kind of uh, three or five atomic bombs, so a pretty strong um, explosion that was uh, recorded from satellites, um, and this uh, generated uh, a lot of interesting things, and uh, one that we have studied was the the atmospheric perturbation which is quite similar uh, to the ones we are studying for, for meteor tsunamis with the difference that this uh, this uh, atmospheric uh, wave that was generated is moving at the speed of sound and we are used to um, used to have um, this perturbation that moved with 30 meters per second and this was 10 times faster uh, but this and here you can see the work uh, that that was mainly done by Angela Mores, uh, the, who simulated uh, how these waves has traveled around the, the Earth, and you can see here his simulation with uh, the the real uh, barograph data, uh, and you can see how the, the timing of passage is it's uh, it fits the the. The observation, so a, a very interesting result that showed that in fact that this this 
this uh, amorphous wave could be simulated as a, a shallow water wave because the 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 velocity of propagation was dip just depending of, of, of a factor and the, the behavior was very really very similar uh, and this well here you have uh, more observations of how the 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 atmospheric wave traveled from the, from Tonga to 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 our to our home uh, and then, then come back and come back and come back and, and it it did three uh, uh, three rounds uh, Around the Earth, and finally, uh, uh, this is a, an, an, an atmospheric perturbation very similar to the ones we're studying for meteorites. So we expect that it has some consequences in the in the in the observed sea level. Here in the Pacific Ocean, there was an important tsunami, as you can see in the in the in the sea, sea level records, uh, which occurred after. The well, the the atmospheric waves traveled faster than the sea waves, so we expect that uh, if the the tsunami is caused by the the atmospheric wave, it arrives earlier than the tsunami wave. But we we see in the observation that uh, the the larger sea level oscillations were were observed in the tsunami arrival time. So it's uh, well, there are a lot of uh, discussion in the literature about which is the the origin of this sea level oscillation in the in the Pacific Ocean, which were uh, very very long, but in in locations as far away as Sitadella, for example, we see that at the time of arrival of the atmospheric perturbation generated by the volcano, there there are uh, important sea level oscillations that are are triggered. And here you have, for example, a Coruña, which also detected uh, this uh, sea level oscillation. Uh, and all around the world, we observed how this uh, sea level oscillation occurred uh, simultaneously with the passage of the atmospheric perturbation generated by the volcano. So it was uh, a really interesting uh, research to do to see uh, this extraordinary phenomena. And that's all. Uh, I, I think I have talked very quickly, but well, it's okay. Uh, so if you have any questions, anything? Yeah. Well, congratulations, I have no idea about metaphonomy before, so it was a really interesting uh, seminar. But I want to ask you do, you, do you have a way of predicting them? I mean, because what you have shown so far, if I'm not wrong, is uh, the analysis of what happened before this small metastronomy. But there is any parameter that indicates to you that we have an increased probability of a metastronomy in, uh, in a few days or hours before? Yes. Well, uh, uh, yes. Uh, as they are caused by a meteorological phenomenon, we have a lot of meteorological models, uh, we can predict the... and. There is a strong relationship between the the synoptic pattern. I'm trying to go there. Uh, that enables the generation of the. Sorry, I uh, There is the synoptic pattern that enables the generation of the atmospheric perturbation that at his turn will generate the sea level response that is the meteorosynamic. So this pattern is relatively uh, easy to to predict because our meteorological models. Uh, work pretty well at this at this scale. So, it, it this in fact the the IMET is have a, uh, have a, a warning which is based on this on this mainly on these observations. And then uh, this uh, the, the outcome of the large scale models is used by SOSIP to 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 uh, that which you use the synoptic situation to to do its their own. Um, uh, Mesoscale scale uh, simulation, and they have uh, a model which simulates the atmosphere and generates the atmospheric perturbation, and they 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 embed this this the outcome of this model to a to a to a to a, to a marine model that simulates the propagation of the wave. So uh, they can be predicted because they are a physical phenomena, and we know the, the basic equations and the basic measurements. And uh, in such if they have the, the resources, and there is uh, and there is even a, another approach based on on neural networks, which takes the 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 sounding uh, launched in in Palma Airport, 
and they have trained an intelligent, uh, an intelligent, an artificial intelligence uh, to 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 infer the tsunami amplitude from the soundings. But this approach uh, needs for more training than the available database of metosonomies that we have. So there are a lot of uh, approaches and. Uh, the WIP uh, meteorology group have even another uh, deterministic approach, which is based on a simplified deterministic model. But yes, we can try to predict it. But they are of their phenomena, so, uh, they, they work in really small scales, and this is very, very hard to exactly predict the amplitude, which is at the end. It, um, a few centimeters are important, and to to have the precision to to simulate these few centimeters properly is, I think, it's very difficult. Yeah. Thank you very much. So um, I, I don't know anything about the tsunamis, but this is the first time that I hear about that. But I was uh, wondering whether, because of the uh, strong currents that you were talking about. Um, whether there's any impact in, for example, the structure of the coast around them or the underwater plants, or uh, is there anything that happens in the hotspots that because of the meta -tsunami, meta tsunamis uh, that is different from what would have been there without them? Mm, I, I, I really, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I think that I've never heard about this in, in any literature. Uh, product, but, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it may be interesting, but they, the metasonomy are usually stronger in, in closed harbors that I think that have uh, biggest worries than uh, this strong current uh, three or five times a year. Uh, and I think that there are a lot of uh, facts that uh, are more important to the, the ecosystems there. Actually, um, are there any ways of mitigating maybe the impact of the meteor tsunami in the harbor of Sierra Adela? Like engineering ideas maybe? Um, because on the one hand, there's a free warning system that everyone, every fisherman can or can get their boats out or something, or, <laughs> or get in, in on the sea. Um, but on the other hand, is there, can be there kind of engineering structure that can break the frequency of the wave or something like this? Uh... Well, I will explain you the, the story of the Ciutadella Harbor. <laughs> because uh, here you see the, the images of the of the, the major tsunami that occurred in, in 2006. And you can see how the, the boats are directly, are directly docked to the, to the uh, fixed uh, dock. I don't know how it's said, uh, but the, there is this, this, uh, this dock, this fixed uh, dock of stone and they are really uh, catched I don't know how, how it said, uh, at this at this fixed uh, location and then what it happens what it happened is that the the strings broke because the the boats uh, were hanging of the really of them and uh, after this meteor tsunami they changed uh, they installed a moving platform in in all the 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 harbor uh, and there is another thing that they they have done. It, the the ferry that goes from Alcudia to Ciutadella, uh, it uh, until um, a few years ago, it, this ferry went in the the harbor, which is very narrow and it was uh, very complicated. You have to make a very strange turn inside this very narrow harbor, and uh, when the the, the 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 warning signal the, the warning system was very useful to avoid uh, that the the this ferry had to do this this very dangerous uh, turn inside the, the harbor and they sent the the the, the, the ferries to to Maon when there was a, a warning and recently they built uh, uh, another harbor outside the the, the Ciutadella narrow harbor so they they are trying to solve it. But in the matter, in the in the point of building something that breaks this meteor tsunami wave, uh, and I I, I I I think that um, it is very complicated because is the the meteor tsunami wave is uh, 
I, I don't know anything about uh, harbor engineering, but I think that it's a very it's a very big wave, like a meteor tsunami wave. A tsunami wave is very difficult to to stop, and this is the case too. But I don't know. I, I may add something. Um, you cannot break the wave because it's a long wave, right? So the only solution that has been considered years ago was to close the harbor. But of course, you need to have a very accurate warning system because if you are closing the harbor and you don't get the meteor tsunami, people get angry, more and more angry. So, and, and about two decades ago or so, they thought about another solution. So, this harbor is resonating at 10 minutes because of its shape, right? So, they thought, okay, what if we change the shape of the harbor? We increase the, there's one bit of the harbor where you can actually build like a, um, a marina. Right, for more harbors. If we change the shape and if we build a bigger harbor, then it will resonate at, the, at a different frequency. So that could be a solution. And we were also uh, actually involved in one of these studies. And we found that, okay, it changes from 10 minutes to 12 to 13 minutes if you enlarge the harbor, which is worse because the energy that we have outside is higher at 13 minutes than at 10. So the resonance would be even bigger. And they say, okay, but then you can put these floating piles. Um, yeah, that, that's okay for the, for the big boats, but um, it's, it's not really a solution. It was considered only, I think, because uh, you can build, it was somehow linked to a, a golf uh, resort nearby with luxury houses and so on, you know. Um, but at the end, the government changed and nothing happened, <laughs> which I think is, is good. <laughs> So and and we are waiting how the, to see how these uh, floating dogs will respond to the next big meteor tsunami because uh, we we know two events that were very big which is the one in nine, in 1970 no why 1983 uh, which was very very big and this one of uh, 2006 was also very big so and after this one a lot of changes were were made like these floating dogs but uh, we we don't know what will happen when when another one comes again yeah, good question. Uh, about the, uh, how good the predictability is because i as far as I understand, there are two, two things to predict, the phenomenon itself and the magnitude. And uh, so uh, how, how good is the system to predict in the magnitude of the meteor tsunami? Uh, uh, because I, I, as far as I understand, uh, once that you have a certain synoptic, synoptic situation, uh, you know that there will be more or less a, a meteor tsunami that uh, as, as far as uh, warning is concerned, uh, big ships are not interested in the meteor tsunami, then uh, it, it only uh, generates very slow uh, amplitude variations. So uh, I don't know if you can tell us uh, anything about this. Uh, well, I, I'm uh, the. Here, here we have Batiste, which is the... the <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> but, but I, I, I can answer uh, the thing that, that, that I know, but there is no, there is no uh, 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 an article focused in evaluating this system until now. Uh, and, but, and in the SOSIP, I think that they have this this very interesting approach that is doing green symbol because. Uh, but the problem with green symbol is if they only have like four members and they have like this probability this probabilistic uh, prediction, but in sometimes one ensemble give uh, two meters and the other one sixty centimeters. So I think that uh, there is a lot of. Uh, I, but I, in fact, I'm. And my doubt is about the, the predictability of the phenomena itself, not about the performance of the of the systems. I think that uh, the more you have in the, in more, more computer power you have, you will reach better 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 probability predictions, and you can do better. But I think that there is a, I don't know for the, the physics behind the phenomena are very complex and nonlinear uh, stuff, and I think that. Uh, reaching an exact prediction someday, uh, it's very, very hard. Uh, yeah, but it's difficult because you saw the, the details in the uh, pressure, air pressure pipe theory. 
So the, the magnitude of the phenomenon will depend on these details. So the, the period, the exact period, the magnitude of these details. So having these details in the model is very really, really tricky and not impossible, I'd say. So what we try to do is, is have an ensemble to do four members at the, at the moment. So we decided to use nine members. And in that, uh, using nine members of an ensemble, we were able to find, so to have the range of the ensemble, the, the observation within the range in 70% of the cases. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty still, but uh, we're able in most of the situations to, to detect, to find the, the warning, right? Warning. But there are still, as you said, a range of warnings. We, 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 we may say it's a yellow warning, but some possibility of red of uh, really high risk attack. And the uh, objective will be to narrow, narrow this. Uh, And about productivity, uh, I'm, I, I, I don't, I, I haven't went in very deep detail of it, but in the Adriatic uh, Sea, they proposed uh, another kind of prediction system that was based more in an in an stochastic system that uh, uh, it it detected if that it is based in simulating a lot of simple cases and to have. A, a uh, bench of, of possible uh, situations and to know the outcome uh, with its uncertainties of each situation and they uh, they had uh, the model which simulated uh, the atmospheric part and uh, provide some parameters to the to the to the to the probabilistic to to the, this probabilistic set to that they and they uh, had this outcome based on, on not on numerical direct simulation of the, on, not on the direct deterministic simulation, but on uh, uh, a system that takes more into account the, the, the uncertainties on the system uh, and taking into account that uh, the computational resources are not infinite. So it was another uh, a different approach to this uh, prediction. You say it's first uh, decreed of the sea level, so it's first uh, our ball draw, but it, isn't it a, um, a first maximum, first, before this, uh, this decrease? You said, you said the first step? Yeah. Ah, yes. It's well, decreed, but what, how, you do, how, do you, how do you identify this? Or is this systematic in your observations? Or, or might, might depend on the phase of the wave, incoming wave? No, it was just an arbitrary choice for the explanation. I, I said, well, I'm, I have the photo which is uh, which appears earlier on the paper, so I will start <laughs> for, uh, <laughs> from from the bottom part. But yeah, I, uh, as you can see in the in the signal, uh, like, uh, and it appears in almost every meteor tsunami uh, time series that I've seen. Uh, the, the increase in the sea level oscillation amplitude is uh, is is uh, positive. Uh, I don't know how it said is first. It starting. You have uh, you have something from you have a small oscillation and then larger oscillations and until it have it has you have your maximum and then it dampens again. Um, I would like you um, to ask about uh, the part where you said that there was a relationship between the dispersion of the velocity that you measure with the grid of materials and meteorologists and the intensity of the event. Yes, this is uh, like something that we see more or less, but we have an exception. Uh, I don't know if you have noticed, but. We have these uh, three events, these three events here that uh, have narrow error bars and they have uh, the largest uh, sea level oscillations. Uh, but if you if you uh, watch carefully, you will see that this event here have also narrow error bars and the sea level oscillation is not as that important. So. Uh, this could be an interesting parameter, and uh, 
uh, we uh, the, the 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 hypothesis that we have is that the fact that all the estimates are consistent uh, is because the atmospheric perturbation uh, is traveling more or less homogeneously over the region, and uh, the fact that our algorithm uh, provides similar estimates uh, is is makes the the the, the atmospheric perturbation consistent. But it's like um, an, an explanation that uh, doesn't uh, it it makes sense, but it's not uh, clear and obvious. And for example, uh, it, we have uh, examples of meteor tsunamis that were generated by a convected system that generated that was generated in between uh, Mallorca and Menorca. So with this system, we never would detect that system. And this would generate an important meteor tsunami. So we we know that this 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 method is not perfect, but uh, maybe after three years of events, we have a set of twenty events more or less, and we can uh, say more things about 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 this. Just, just one final thing here. Uh, to, to add, or just to try to understand why uh, some some uh, of the events uh, generate uh, large amplitude phenomena, uh, not ones, not that large. Uh, does wind strength has anything to do with it, or could a uh, wind strength happen? Well, uh, in no, because we just spoke about the uh, 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 atmospheric pressure, but uh, I don't know if it means. Well, in principle. Uh, Atmospheric, these atmospheric pressure oscillations, uh, they are associated to atmospheric gravity wave, and the relationship between the atmospheric pressure change and the and the wind change, uh, the, the the wind change at this frequency is known, so uh, it doesn't care which uh, magnitude are you looking at, they are like a part of the same system, and and uh, it doesn't affect. And also looking into uh, wind velocity, in principle, it generates waves that uh, in in another frequency band than the one that we are studying. But it is still a mystery how frequency bands interact between themselves in 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 this uh, phenomenon. Uh, and we usually take into account that the as the as the phenomena are linear, which would mean that every frequency band interacts with uh, all the wind themselves. In understanding that like, there is uh, this uh, frequency band that is causing the same frequency band effect in the in the sea, and it propagates uh, without interacting with the other frequency band, and it reaches the, the harbor. But uh, I, it's a question that I would like to tackle some in, at some moment in during my thesis, but. Uh, I'm not sure how to do it, <laughs> but but I think that uh, wind, in principle, is in, in this particular in the case of meteor tsunamis in the Balearic Islands, which are not the same the, the same case that meteor tsunamis all over the world. I think that they are not important, and in fact, uh, they meteor tsunamis appear in very calm day, uh, which the, the synoptic situation that I've described is usually uh, related to to mud rain in Mallorca because we have this entrance of Saharian air which is associated with with uh, this uh, Saharian dust and this this uh, this amorphous situation is also provinced to some convection that enables the rain and uh, if uh, in the summer we have uh, dust rain in Palma it's probably it's very likely to have a uh, tsunami today Any questions?